Today we're going to be reviewing the American Congress of Obstetrics and Gynecology's BCOM mnemonic for the management of shoulder dystocia. B. B stands for breathe. Ask the mother to breathe deeply and not to push. The risk of pushing is of course you can worsen the dystocia where you have the baby shoulder bony shoulder impacted against the bony maternal uh, symphysis and as you will uh, hear in another part of this discussion there is some literature suggesting that uh, having the mother push thereby raising the intra-abdominal pressure once the baby's head is delivered may put the baby at increased risk of hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy E. E stands for elevate the legs. You want to push the mother's legs as high as you can onto the abdomen. Flex them as high as you can onto the abdomen. This may help relieve the dystocia in three ways. One, it rotates the maternal symphysis up and out a bit, thereby increasing the pelvic diameter. Secondly, it acts to flatten the sacral promenadery. And thirdly, just the motion may actually act to shake or move the baby's shoulder off the synthesis. C. C stands for call for help. You're going to want to have your obstetrician and anesthesiologist present to help with the delivery. You're going to need more nurses present to help with things such as the McRoberts maneuver, the elevating the legs, and you're going to want your pediatrician and an ICU nurse to be available to resuscitate the baby if needed. A. A stands for apply suprapubic pressure, not fungal pressure. You want to have a CPR style hand position and apply pressure to the posterior aspect of the anterior shoulder with a rocking motion. You do this maneuver and the other ones for about 30 seconds each. You do not want to do fungal pressure. Fungal pressure will only act to impact the baby's shoulder more firmly against the symphysis. Demonstrate what you're actually wanting to do is to actually move the baby's shoulder anteriorly like this on the thorax, thereby decreasing the bisochromial diameter and perhaps dislodging it. L. L stands for enlarge the vaginal opening or episiotomy. The purpose of this is to make more room for your hands. Some of the maneuvers which follow require the uh, physician, midwife, nurse, obstetrician to actually place their hand into the vagina to try to help relieve the shoulder dystocia. This makes more room for that. Making a soft tissue cut in and of itself is not going to relieve the bone on bone dystocia. M. M stands for maneuvers. First maneuver is the Rubin maneuver. In the Rubin maneuver, you want to take two fingers and place them in posterior to the baby's anterior shoulder or behind the baby's anterior shoulder and then give pressure, forward pressure, attempting to dislodge the shoulder from the symphysis. So the baby can demonstrate what you're attempting to do is actually again you want to 
move the baby's shoulder anteriorly as such. That's the Reuben maneuver. The Woods maneuver, you actually keep those two fingers in behind the baby's anterior shoulder. Take the other hand and place the same two fingers, index and middle finger, onto the baby's posterior shoulder, rather the anterior aspect of the baby's posterior shoulder. Then by pressing to giving pressure with both of them simultaneously, you can hopefully rotate the baby through the pelvis, such as this. To demonstrate, what you want to do is you want to place two fingers posterior to the anterior shoulder and two fingers as such anterior to the posterior shoulder. And then what you're trying to do is rotate like this. Reverse wood screw is just the opposite. You switch your hand position so that your two fingers are anterior to the anterior shoulder, posterior to the posterior shoulder, and you're trying to do the same in the opposite direction as such. Demonstrating. Again, wood screw, reverse wood screw, anterior to the anterior shoulder, posterior to the posterior shoulder, and you try to rotate the baby through like that. That is the wood screw and the reverse wood screw. Next maneuver is removal of the posterior arm. You want to place your hand in underneath the baby. You're going to run your fingers along the baby's humerus. Once you get your finger into the antecubital fossa, the baby's forearm, elbow, sh pardon me, elbow should, there should be flexion at the elbow, allowing you to grasp the forearm. Then you want to either pull straight out with the forearm and attempt to deliver the baby, or sweep the forearm across the baby's chest, allowing you to rotate the baby out as such. To demonstrate. Put your hand in underneath the baby, run your fingers along the humerus. When you reach the antecubital fossa, the forearm should flex. Then you then want to grasp the forearm and either pull straight out or sweep it across the baby's chest and rotate the baby out as such. That's removal of the posterior arm. The final maneuver we're going to discuss in this section is rolling the patient. Okay, you just roll her onto all fours. You then attempt to do the same maneuvers as you did before, as, as you did in a, in a normal uh, delivery with the woman on her back. Just gentle downward traction, gentle, and then hopefully you'll deliver the baby. If again the baby is still stuck, you can do all the same maneuvers. Reuben, wood screw, reverse wood screw, remove the arm, all in this same position. This was the BCOM mnemonic.